from the Hungry Monk in Chandler. It's Drinking AZ with George, Duncan, Adam, and special guest Giddy Goldberg. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing great. Thank uh, you for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you for, thank you for having us. And before we get going here, uh, I just want to get a couple uh, things out. Uh, first of all, the perch. Andrew Bowman. Big shout out to Andrew. Uh, they brewed. He brewed their first batch of beer um, from their system yesterday. It was uh, Calibration Pale Ale, and hopefully that went well. And, and everybody here in Chandler and everybody in the Valley is really excited uh, for the perch finally getting it online. Duncan, how you doing tonight? I'm good. Good. So, Duncan, uh, we have American coming up. Yes, we do. The festival, festival. Saturday. Adam won't be there, but uh, and Katie won't be there, but you and I will be there. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. I was is, born your, ready. is your liver ready? Well, definitely. You know, there's a uh, article on Drinking AZ, the blog, um, that t talks about how you can avoid getting uh, too drunk by drinking brewer's yeast. Yeah. Yeah. Are you trying that out? No. No. Did you see the follow-up story to that? No. Was it all bull? Uh, somebody somebody uh, debunked it. Got really, really, really drunk doing and really sick doing that. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, we don't make the news; we just report the news. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Thank God we don't make it because you need a lot of lawyers. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't try it. Yeah, I might try it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll maybe see if it maybe works. they did it wrong. So we're at the Hungry Monk, which is an incredible place. If you haven't been here, part bar, part restaurant. We've got kids here eating. We've got rock and roll playing. It's just a really nice, friendly vibe, family type place. And Giddy uh, Goldberg was nice enough to invite us down. Giddy, thanks for the invite for starters. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm glad you guys can uh, come check out the uh, pub here. As you can see, definitely a great family atmosphere. And we have the great craft beer, so we get a lot of neighborhood folks coming in. Absolutely, and the food, which uh, we are, we're about ready to try some food here. We're going to go ahead and uh, chow down on this, and then we'll talk about it here in a second. Phoenix Brewing Supply is an online retailer based in the Phoenix metro area. This online shop is geared up to give the home brewer competitive prices on a wide selection of all of your home brewing needs. Phoenix Brewing Supply provides quick access to a variety of hops, yeast, additives, and adjuncts, spital fermenters, five-star chemicals, chillers, draft equipment, plumbing, and hardware are all products you can find at the click of a button. When you can get most orders shipped within one business day, why go anywhere else? Log on to phoenixbrewingsupply.com today and receive 10% off of your first order when you register online. Phoenix Brewing Supply, what are you brewing today? All right, and we're back. And what are we eating here, uh, Giddy? We got the orange wheat fish tacos. Can you elaborate on that a little okay. bit for us? So the uh, first course here is a uh, fish taco. Your typical fish taco is fried fish. We make it a little lighter, and we pan sear the fish. Uh -huh. uh, no breading? No breading on it. We pan sear it in uh, Hefeweizen beer, so we use Hangar 24 orange wheat. The citrus in the Hefeweizen kind of really balances out with the fish, and especially because... Um, we uh, saute it with our house seasoning in there. It's just a 10-season uh, ten, ten spice rub, and so that has a little bit of a spice in there that canners act with the um, citrus tones that go are in the beer. We just add a little bit of green cabbage, pico, and a uh, house-made chipotle mayo to top off the uh, fish taco. And, what, and it's pretty spicy. It is. The, with the chipotle mayo and the house seasoning, it does add a little bit of kick to it. And it looks like it has a jalapeno on the side if you want to take it to that next level. Yeah. You can do Those that. are actually a uh, serrano pepper, a little serrano? bit spicier than a jalapeno. Oh, okay. Why Keller Weiss? Tell us why you chose this uh, beer. Pairing it with Keller Weiss, Keller Weiss is a, one, it's one of the best uh, Hefeweizens that is produced on a larger scale. Um, Sierra Nevada does a great job. It's a it's a great, wonderful beer. Um, what I really like about the Keller Weiss is the lemon notes that come across mm -hmm. in the beer. And when having seafood, those lemon notes pair so well with the seafood, the acidity and the lemon notes pair so well with the seafood dish. It kind of really balances out to go well with the flavors. And that makes sense to go... You know, lemon notes with seafood. You know. to and kind of what I, how I look at it is, you know, you have a nice little citrusy beer. Well, if you're going to have a wine or something like that with fish, you're going to have a white wine, typically have a white wine right. that has a little bit of those citrus flavors to it from the grapes. And so I kind of look a lot of way how I do my pairings is 
what would I use with other liquors or wines? And a lot of those same attributes go with food and the beers. Like so, uh-huh. like, you know, as you'll see, some of the darker beers go with some of the heavier meats. Some of the lighter meats get the lighter beers. Not as necessarily they all light beer, right. not like Bud Light or Coors Light, but your uh-huh. lighter craft beers, your Pilsners, your Goldens, your Hefeweizens. Right, and you would do the lemon garnish with the the Keller Weiss here with. Um, you can keeping with the whole seafood theme. Yeah, very good. Well, we can't wait for the next one. So next one's one of my. I'm really excited for the next one. I really like that one. Steak crostini. Yeah, trying right. trying the combination of all it earlier. Uh, the other, when we had an event the other day, this one came about is I had a steak sandwich with a lot of these ingredients on it and trying to steak sandwich, just tried pieces of it and it just tasted so good all together. Figured let you all try it. All right. We'll be right back with Drinking AZ. This is George. Talk to you soon. This is Dunk from the Dunk Tank here at Drinking AZ. And tonight I want to tell you about Blackstone Limousine. Their cars are beautiful. They have a Lincoln Town car and a Ford Excursion, which seats 10 passenger. Huge sound systems, CDs, DVDs, and iPod hookups. Their services are amazing for all occasions. So if you're a bachelor, bachelorette, birthday, weddings, proms, night outs, bar hopping, anything you need, you can contact Blackstone Limousine. Call Chris at 480-229-6954 and you can see them on the web at www.blackstonelimousinellc.com so ladies get your man to take you in a blackstone limousine today and we're back with drinking az for course number two at the hungry monk with our guest, Giddy Goldberg. Giddy, uh, what do we drink? Or Wow. Well, we are drinking what? beer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. What are we drinking with this second course of Steak Crostini? Uh, so we've got uh, Steak Crostini here. It's paired with Ska Pinstripe Red. A little description of the Steak Crostini. It's a ba- baguette uh, toasted up with a uh, steak cooked medium rare. It's top sirloin. You've got caramelized beer onions that are cooked in a kilt lifter, and then a roasted garlic rosemary aioli on top. Wow, that's like sex on a plate right there. We're having a little debate here about the beer. Exactly what the, we we all no debate about the beer being good, but we're trying to figure out exactly where this uh, beer would be classified. Duncan, you're looking on your BJCP droid. Uh, what do you think? Does this qualify as an Irish red to you? Well, according to my mass knowledge of uh, craft beer and pretzel beer. <laughs> uh, you know, this is uh, definitely under a uh, uh, Irish red ale because I like this though because you know it has that almost light buttery character with uh, a low hop aroma and uh, it's quite clean. Wow, <laughs> almost didn't sound like you were reading that. <laughs> So, we got, we got to talk about the food because that was amazing. I I want like a hundred of those. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, that's um, why I came, that's why I came up with that. I was like, I'm just kind of hard not to eat that all day long. Tell me tell me about that. Okay, I'll just uh, start by going over the ingredient. First, I start with the uh, steak. The steak's been marinated. Now, did you create this this dish? I did. You did. Yes. Did you create all these dishes? Yes. Wow. You're the man. So this is... Um, I, you know what? I'm sorry I wasn't f- fully aware of that, that you were the actual creator of all these dishes. So yeah. So our creative uh, system is yeah. I, I come up with a lot Being of the, uh, the ideas for the dishes, uh-huh. um, and I have my big picture of what. And then uh, Matt is um, our head chef, uh-huh. and he's uh, more... He, so he has a culinary training in the background. I bring him the ideas. We Together we work at it, and we uh, formulate all the ingredients. We put it together... We work with very well with each other to, to bring everything all together. You got a good job. And um, so the steak crostini here uh-huh. is, first I take the steak, it's top sirloin. I marinate it in, uh, this was a black pea porter, balsamic, and brown sugar. It marinates overnight. Um, it helps tenderize the meat as it brings that moisture in there and that flavor in there. Uh, so, and then we cook the steak. I like to cook my steak medium rare. Um, don't overdo it, and still the flavor's still all locked in. Uh-huh. And then, on top of that, we have the kilt lifter braised onions. Those onions are—I love those onions. I put them on a lot of different things, 
but they cook in kilt lifter, butter, brown sugar. They cook um, and cook for. Now are they are they marinated or soaked in kilt um, lifter? Or? They cook they cook and simmer for an hour and a half. Oh really? So they take a long long. It's easy to do, but they take a long time to do. Uh huh. But very simple. I know there's the onions, brown sugar, butter, salt, and beer. Five ingredients in it. Uh, just uh, takes a little bit of time to cook. You sit and wait, but that it's, it's mm-hmm. great caramelization, great flavor to it. The maltiness that you get from the kilt lifter goes really well. Uh, great on burgers. I put them on my cheesesteaks. Um, and then the rosemary garlic aioli we added on there had some roasted garlic, some fresh rosemary. My base for a lot of my sauces is a beer mayo. Uh, so all my aiolis, a lot of my sauces have a start with a beer mayo, which is um, makes it with the beer I put in there is I reduce down pale ale or IPA. A lot of times uh-huh. I use Union Jack or Pale 31, two of my favorites. I reduce that down and then add in some herbs and seasonings to the mayo, and that becomes a start. Wow. And, and then, so I'll just probably quickly say uh-huh. the pinstripe red having a nice caramely uh, maltiness to it. A lot of little hops pairs well with that little bit of steak and those caramelized onions on there. Right. Brings out with the flavors. They really go well together. Ale. They, guys, what do you think? Definitely, definitely good. Love it, Giddy. Giddy up. Giddy, giddy up on giddy that up. one. Giddy up. Yeah, I haven't heard absolutely. that before. <laughs> yeah. Now, we were talking uh, off the air a minute ago that you uh, are a, a devil, Sun Devil. I am. What was your major at ASU? I have a uh, marketing degree. Nice. So, undergraduate is marketing. I did a... Uh, did grad school for a couple years uh-huh. um, in the educational leadership. Uh, so as okay. f- was been focused working on university, uh, decided I liked, loved working in restaurants too much uh-huh. and loved food too much that I decided I didn't finish quite finish the grad program, but got most of the way through. But restaurants is where I've always wanted to be since I was a little kid. You know, I've always played around. You know, my Playing around as a kid, I was like, create my own restaurant. And but you've got it, you've got this thing dialed in because from from the outsider's perspective, because you're working in a restaurant, you're not really a chef, you're not really a server, you're not really, uh, you're kind of doing it all, uh, all ar- all around. You know, Util- jack of all utility trades. man. Yeah, and yeah. being being in the restaurant business for now over ten years since I graduated college, I grew up around the restaurant business. Well, my dad was in a bread bread business back in Philly. Was it Wit Wiz? Oh, yes. Wit Wiz was all, all the way. All the way Wit Wiz? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the ribeye, yeah. Wiz, onions, Amoroso, steak roll. Yeah. Well, who has the best uh, cheesesteak here in town? Oh, that's uh, well, actually a really good one. Philly's famous right up the road at Ray and Alma School. I think I've heard they the have one really Chandler's good cheesesteaks. Really what about Corleone's? Theirs are pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of sucker for if you come even close. I love cheesesteaks that much. Uh-huh. Um, so, so there's Gino's out, has a pretty decent one out. Uh, Bell Vista and Williamsfield. They also have one right by ASU. You need to get with your ownership here and ha- make sure you know have them get a cheesesteak going. I actually do a cheesesteak. Do you on the truck? Yeah, it's called a not so Philly Philly. Uh-huh. Um, I do those these beer onions in there. I do the ribeye. Um, but so why, do, why is it not so Philly? Because um, I do provolone on it, which can be done in Philly. But I, the difference is I use a ciabatta roll, and I put my bacon beer aioli on it. So two non-so classic ingredients, but it, it's an awesome sandwich. Do you think the guys back in Philly would uh, approve? Um, as long as I don't call it a normal Philly, I Just think call it okay. something else. That's why I call it the not so Philly Philly. Awesome. Okay. Now this beer that we're drinking, the the Ska Pinstripe Red, would that go well? Pair well with the uh, Philly cheesesteak. I th- I think it would. I think it would too. Um, I think any sort of amber or red. I think a beer I really would like with a Philly cheesesteak would be Alaskan amber. Um, it's more of an alt beer, right? Of a re- of an amber style, uh-huh. and so it's got that awesome maltiness to it. Right. That I would think really pair well with the uh, the beer onions I put on mine and yeah. the steak itself. I think Alaskan amber is something that would be better paired than I, I I don't find that to be a beer that I can session and sit and drink a bunch of. Um, but I'm with you. I think it'd be great with with sandwich or even anything yeah. like Kilt Lift or our local Four Peaks right. Kilt Lift or Temp, you know, Pride of Tempe. Right. right. All right. Well, we can't wait for the next segment. We'll be right back with Drinking AZ. Hey, this is Dunk from the Dunk Tank. 
Did you know Topps Liquor has over 2,000 wines in stock from all over the world and over 2,000 spirits? There's huge selections of rum, tequila, scotch, vodka, you name it, they got it. And did I mention beer? Over 2,000 varieties of craft beer from Arizona and all over the world. So come next door to the Taste of Tops, where you can always find at least 25 very special beers on tap and hundreds of beers by the bottle. Come on down to Tops, and you'll never want to leave. That is, until your wife tells you to come home. And we're back with Drinking AZ and Burning Palettes. We had the Green Chili Pork, and uh, Duncan had to bow out like a little baby. Like a little baby. He went home. <laughs> you know. How many bites did you have? Like four or five. This is, yeah. This is a bit spicy. You set your mouth on fire? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it gave me the hiccups, which it, which it doesn't take a whole lot to give me the hiccups if I get spicy food, but I fought through it. The IPA really helped. I was drinking water, and it wasn't getting anywhere with it. And then once I started drinking the IPA, it helped with the heat. Um, Giddy, what do you what? How'd you come up with this? Yeah. This is. I will have to say that Duncan had more bites than the Jewish guy did. <laughs> right. So how did so, you come up with this concept? Um, really, I. As far as me, my brain just works in weird ways and thinks of different things. Um, I've always liked the idea behind green chili pork. It's a great southwest, you know, southwestern uh-huh. Arizona dish. Right. Um, and me loving IPAs, it's like, okay, something spicy goes great with IPAs. Um, let's add some green chilies. I have a, get a lot of inspiration from the southwestern ingredients, so I do, do make a lot of spicy dishes, do use jalapenos, serranos, and the chili peppers. Um, in flavoring, they are such a, you can use, so, get a lot from so little, uh-huh. uh, flavor-wise. Um, so what I do differently, and a lot of people might not do with their green chili pork is, so I have my green chili pork, I use fresh green chilies, make a fresh green chili sauce. The pork is already smoked, so we, after it's smoked, I stew it together with the green chili sauce and add in Union Jack or an IPA, uh-huh. uh, Union Jack by Firestone is one of my favorite IPAs. Right. So, so it I doesn't like to have to that. be Union Jack, but you go with a. It doesn't have go, to be you Union go Jack. With an IPA. It can be Hop Knot. It can uh-huh. be Two Hearted. I just really like how those, those Uni- are all great beers, yeah. by the way. Yeah. yeah, Union Jack's the first one I did with it. It t- came out really good, so I was like, okay, why mess with perfection too much? Right. Um, so within the batch, the pork stews for about half an hour to hour with the green chili sauce and the beer cooking through it, spreading through it. Um, what's nice is a lot of times when you're cooking, you have to be really clear about cooking with IPAs. Because if you cook too much or do too much with it, the, it gets very bitter. Uh-huh. By boiling so it. So if you reduce down the IPAs, um, the, uh, the IBUs stay the same? or Yeah. Yeah. The flavor doesn't do anything to the IBUs, but okay. it takes out the alcohol content right. a little bit. But with this, because it's cooking with the green chili sauce and melding with the pork, you don't get that so much. Right. Uh, and then what is green, great about this green chili pork, and what we did is we paired it with Sculpin uh, from Ballast Point in San Diego, their IPA, mm-hmm. another awesome IPA. Uh-huh. The IPA stands up to the heatness in the pork, it com- and it complements it. You know, came to the rescue in yeah. a way. Yeah. You know, and you know, who needs milk? Who needs water? Who right. needs bread? You got an IPA. Right. An IPA tastes so much better than milk, bread, or water anyway. Right. And uh, with all the great IPAs that you have at your disposal, how did you pick Sculpin? It was really just process of, uh, I really like Sculpin. Um, we tapped it today. and. Okay. So it was. It was. I was either going to do uh, Sculpin or Two Hearted. I think they both have really great flavors. Uh-huh. I think Sculpin has a little bit more pal to it than Two Hearted. Right. Um, so Sculpin has a lot more of that, a little bit more hop boom to it, a little bit more of that, and that's uh-huh. what I'm looking for to go with the spicy. We did a blind tasting, uh, Phil Spivey and I back uh, a year ago or so, and uh, we had the Bell's Two Hearted. We had the Sculpin. We had. The um, what was the other one you just said? Union Jack. The Union Jack was was one of them, and a, a few others. And the the bells heart the bells two hearted won out. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's but I a, mean, I like them all. Yeah, two hearted is a great beer. Yeah. yeah I think as far as just just pure drinkability goes. Yeah. Maybe without food. 
you know? I would say so. It's a two hearts a little bit more balanced too. It, I think uh-huh. that some of the other, you have the nice that you have a lot of that hoppiness, but it's not so overpowering right. that you can drink them a little bit easier without getting that bitterness right. as now, much. Now, what did you guys think of the beer over there, Duncan? Actually, yeah, after you crawled yeah. away with your tails between your legs on the on the food. Well, no, but after drinking the beer, it definitely neutralized did the it? heat. Okay, so. you're yeah. glistening. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it certainly helped out my tongue. You yeah. know, I was I was hurting a little bit from that heat, but great stuff, Giddy. I mean, it really tasty pork. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, the sculpin definitely helped it out. As they say, hell's to the yeah. That's all I got to say. This is awesome, and I just want to thank you guys so much. You know, we're away from our uh, our our home field, which is Taste the Tops, uh, Tops Liquor. Um, but this is, you know, I can't think of a better place to be than the Hungry Monk. We will be right back and talking about course number four, which has something to do with chocolate. So we'll see where that goes. You're listening to Drinking AZ. Hey guys, this is Katie with Drinking AZ. Home and small batch brewers don't look any further than brew gear. Get your locally produced brewing equipment from Brew Gear with a full range of kettles, fermenters, and systems from five gallons to seven barrels. Brew Gear sells directly to the customer, allowing you to get the system of your dreams for a fraction of the cost. Brewgear.com. And back with course number four. Giddy, this uh, looks really good. And I see chocolate in the mix here when, and some dark beer. Could you tell us a little bit about what we're, we're going to get ready to eat here? Yeah, it's a uh, top sirloin, uh, chili, chocolate chili crusted sirloin. Uh, chocolate, chili, ground espresso, and a few other seasonings. Um, nice piece of steak uh, cooked up. Uh, it's served with a, a mushroom risotto. So we got the black bee porter to go with that. You got that great earthy bodiness to the black bee porter. Uh, which will transition you from the steak and with the mushroom risotto. Um, you've got the nice richness of the steak. It's going to be balanced out a little bit with the rich. You know, you have the black bee porter. It does have a lot of richness in it, but it's a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of smoothness as well. Uh-huh. So it's going to really, really, really contrast and compare really well. With All the- right. We're going to chow it down on this for a few minutes, and we'll be right back. And let me tell you, Giddy, that was terrible. It was awful. The worst. Yeah, that's why you ate it all. I had to send it back. <laughs> and we have uh, Duncan being impersonated by the lovely Katie. I mean, I do Christianer. make a good Duncan, I think, you know. You make a, you make a way better Duncan. <laughs> I know, du- what, I know Much don't better I? Duncan. <laughs> Both all around for that. A lot sexier. There's not true. enough alcohol true. in the world did you to lick your, Duncan. Did like you lick your plate, George? I think you licked it. I close. licked mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there something wrong with that? <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about what we just devoured. Okay. Well, that was uh, a, well, according to all the plates, there's nothing left. Right. But it's a uh, chocolate chili crusted sirloin. Um, top sirloin, nice good cut of meat, uh, crusted with uh, a cocoa powder, a ground espresso, chili powder, and a few other seasonings. We sear it up. On the flat, sear it up and then uh, flame grill it. Uh, cook it to about medium rare, um, and then it was served with a mushroom risotto and then pl- plated with a little bit of our uh, housemade steak sauce. Uh, steak sauce. It's a homemade steak sauce made from scratch, and we uh, use a uh, left-hand milk stout in there, give it a nice little rounded flavor. Adam, what do you think of this? Oh my goodness. Um, well. I couldn't breathe after I was done eating because I was just shoveling it down. You had a moment? Um, man, I love the, the introduction of the cocoa and the chili. It wasn't, it wasn't really, it wasn't too spicy, just the right amount of heat in there. And it's um, and you're, the medium rare, best way to cook a yeah. steak, in my opinion. So. I, I agree. That's why I w- didn't give anyone the option. I'm just going to uh, cook it how I think it's meant to be and eaten. That, and that mushroom risotto? That was great. I yeah, mean, taking I want, a scoop I want of the that, recipe. taking a scoop of that on top of a piece of the steak. I don't know if you guys were eating it that way, but I was. Yeah. I was too, and I loved it. Yeah, every bit, and and great, great connection to the the porter from Deschutes. Oh, you 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 love. I like it. The mushroom risotto has that. The mushrooms have that great earthiness, yeah. and you look like a porter. It's a like Black Butte. 
it's got that that earthiness to it as well, mm-hmm. right? Um, as opposed to some heavy stouts, which have a lot more chocolatey, a lot more roasty flavor. Black Butte's a little bit more mild, a little bit smoother, yeah. and so. You have that richness from the steak, the steak sauce, the cocoa, the chocolate. Yep. We have a little bit of the chocolate notes in the Black Butte, but you also have that earthiness with bridges between the steak and the risotto. And I think the uh, the Black Butte is a really good beer. I've drank six packs of that before, but paired with the food, it just uh, stand. You know, the food stands up to the porter. Let's it, put yeah. it that way. It was a great experience. You should yeah. really, yeah. I mean, put that on the menu. Suggest with the the same pairing that we had today, and I, I guarantee you that your belongs customer, on the menu. Your customer will walk out of here yeah. very satisfied. That belongs on the menu I will, for uh, sure. Bring it to the powers of be. I agree. Yeah. It you know, and it was just our uh, first time doing the dish. Nice. Glad and you all got to enjoy it and be our uh, guinea pigs for it. And we had, so we had chocolate and and coffee. Chocolate, coffee, chili. Nice. The three C's. Nice. The next thing up is coming up is the dessert. Tell me. How did you handle the dessert? Like, could have went a couple different ways with, with pairing and dessert, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different ways um, you can go. Um, you can do the sweet dessert. Um, you can do, like, the fruit dessert and pair it with, like, a fruit beer. Uh-huh. You can do a chocolatey dessert and pair it with a rich stout, like mm-hmm. a Russian Imperial. Or you can, what I did is I have the bananas. You have the sweetness from the bananas. are caramel, going to be caramelized in this Bananas Foster. Mm. But there's also going to be a dark chocolate stout sauce mixed into it. Well, I'm going a little bit not as so traditional, but I'm going to pair it. We're going to try it with a uh, golden ale. So you're going to have a nice crisp flavor to the golden ale that's going to go balance and nice little cleansing of the palate that compares with that dark chocolate and the sweetness to it. The brightness of the ale contrasting with the the chocolate. Yeah. I'm looking you, forward you're gonna to have that. A lot, it's going to be a lot of juxtaposition in there, uh-huh. uh, but which is great about some of these pairings and things you can do with the beer and the food is you don't have to be traditional because those cross flavors and those different ideals to it work so well. Right. Yeah, and I, I, can I just say something that if someone, let's say, chose to take that off your menu and they decided afterwards to have a dessert of bananas foster and still had some leftover porter still probably would be a great a great combination exactly and you'll see like that's why like we have uh when we have american coming up we're gonna have our food truck there the traveling monk and so i put a few different options of what different styles of beer you could put with each course i and i will we will be there at american duncan and i uh, probably my wife with us as well, and uh, we'll come by the Hungry Monk. And I'm pretty sure you're going to want to try the bacon tacos. Bacon tacos. It's got to be good just here in, the, here in the name. Absolutely. So we're going to try this dessert, and we'll be right back with Drinking AZ. And we're back with Drinking AZ. And course number five and the dessert, Bananas Foster. Dang, this is good. Yeah, it is. Duncan, oh. what do you think? Yeah, if uh, Adam's mom wasn't here, I'd say this is a smack your mama good. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm afraid she'd smack me. She would smack you back. She didn't hear you. She's too busy eating her bananas foster. Giddy, this is uh, not your not your regular bananas foster. It's got a lot going on. Tell us a little bit about this. Um, so your traditional bananas foster, um, as New Orleans, you do it in New Orleans, is... Caramelized, you have bananas, caramelized in brown sugar, butter, cinnamon. Um, so we do that part. We caramelize the bananas. Um, but with, before, so well, but after we caramelize them, we add in our house-made stout, Nutella stout chocolate sauce. So we got Nutella and left-hand milk stout together in a uh, um, sub, some mix of dark and uh, milk chocolate. All made into a sauce that mi- mixes in with the bananas. Then we have pour in the rum and flambe it. Serve it with a little bit of ice cream. So do you flambe it with the the sauce in it? So the so- the chocolate sauce and yeah, and the bananas get all mixed together in the pan, sautéed together in the pan. While afterwards, then we uh, add on the rum and then flambe it to finish it off. So it all- wow. so as it's cooking, the chocolate sauce gets melted and melts throughout the. Uh, Oh, ca- to help caramelize the bananas. I'm just like eating the melted ice cream and just digging that. Yeah, no, all, all in and of itself. Yeah, nothing like the the vanilla ice cream, the nice coldness and the richness of vanilla ice cream to pair with the uh, coldness there. And then you've got this great crisp, 
uh, Summer Love Beer by Victory Brewing down in I think you're going out on a limb a little bit with this. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit going, you know, stretching it out there. Um, but you got that crispness and the flavor there. You have that so much complexity in the Bananas Foster and all that richness and all that flavor that the crispness, you get that beer still, but it's letting the food still do its talking. Right. It works. It, it does. And I, I wouldn't, if I were ordering Bananas Foster, I wouldn't. And, and I still had this kind of beer left. I probably would have got a porter or something to go with it. But Giddy, like Giddy, like I said, I I still have a little bit of that porter left, and I tried that. Still great with that yeah. as well. Yep. So you can't go wrong. I'd say you got a good pairing. Put that steak on the menu with, paired up with a dessert of bananas Foster. You're golden. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, and I'm glad you all got to uh, enjoy a little bit of our playfulness tonight. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And, and uh, before we get going here, um, was there anything else you wanted to share with us? We've got some great dishes like the fish tacos we had today, the green chili pork. We've also got our uh, fabulous bacon tacos. Tell and, me about the bacon tacos. Well, who doesn't like bacon? And bacon pairs well with just about anything. Right. But what we do is we do corn tortillas, um, Mexico City street style. So they still have a little bit of cheese in the middle, two tortillas. We put applewood smoked bacon. Uh, top it with pico de gallo, a bacon slaw, and a bacon beer aioli. Now, is this crispy bacon? or it, uh, By the time it gets on the tacos, it's pretty crispy. Yeah? So it's diced up. It's diced bacon, uh-huh. all crisped up. Not nice. quite the point of bacon bits where it's all super shredded, but it's... Okay. Yeah, they are unbelievable, those tacos, the bacon tacos. You won't want to miss them. I'm all over that. Let's talk a little bit about events that are going on before we wrap it up here. We have the, uh, the American that we're going to be at, and... We have some things looking looking down the, the nose at the future here. We're looking at possibly doing uh, some a road trip of some sort. Heck what do yeah. you think? You want Tucson? I think uh, I'll go anywhere. I'm thinking the summer coming up. Okay, we want to go up north. We want to do Get on Made the in the Shade up in Flagstaff. Yep. Yeah. Right. Some, some in some way, shape, or form, some iteration of our show is going to be up there. Perfect. And then we also want to do. Um, like I was saying before, you know, we got a place we can crash in Pine Top, so we could go up to Pine Top and do something, and we could hit Pine on the way back. Yeah. Uh, there's a place called That Brewery. I've been there. We've, we've oh, have there. you? Yeah. We've it's driven re- past it many times. Okay. It's a really cool brewery. I've stopped right. over there before. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So give that a shot, yeah. and uh, you know, maybe save uh, have a Sioux. And Kingman, the, the breweries up there, maybe save those for the fall because you don't quite get an ocean breeze up at Lake Havasu. Nah, no. And I don't know if we quite. want to be there during spring break. No. No. Or the summertime at any point, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. When it's the 120 degrees and, and all that good stuff. Well, just in general, I know I'm going to be gone out of town. Duncan's going to be doing – you guys are going to be doing a show without me. We're taking yeah, over, I man. Think we're going to do a homebrew show. Homebrew show? Yep. Okay. And uh, that, that'll that be good. We'll have somebody representing Phoenix uh, uh, Brewing Supply, yeah. one of our sponsors. Yep. And you guys are going to be doing that from Taste to Tops, from what I understand. Okay. Yes, we will. Okay. All right. Any closing thoughts, Giddy? Just so the listeners out there, if you have not been down to the Hungry Monk, uh, come on down. We're located here in Chandler, Chandler and Dobson Boulevard. Um, 28 beers on tap, so you definitely want to come check it out. R- rotating handles, so it's all change out the beer list three or four times a week. Killer so there's food. always something new. I just saw a plate of onion rings go by that looked pretty amazing. Those are really good. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, great wings with uh, some of the best blue cheese you'll have in town. We make it ourselves. Really? really? What do you mean you make your own blue cheese? We make our own blue cheese. You make cheese. the cheese? You grow the cheese? We don't make the cheese. We okay. got the blue you cheese crumbles in, but we make the blue cheese. Okay. We make the blue cheese dressing, I should say. Okay. So we don't do it like they do in Wisconsin. Highly fresh. Yeah, we're dealing with a bunch of cheese heads here. <laughs> so uh, for Duncan Lee and Adam Wallace. Yeah. And Katie Krishner. Yep. And Giddy Goldberg. This Giddy is George Lindblom, and we are going to catch you next time on Drinking AZ. Thanks.